So in today's video, I'm going to show you a portrait lighting setup that costs almost next to nothing. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome again to my small home studio and for everyone that's new to the channel, this is my shooting area, a relatively small one. It is only three meters deep and two meters wide. Now I said in my intro, I will show you a very basic portrait lighting setup that costs almost next to nothing. But before that, let's talk about everything that's here. Now I have here a backdrop. This is actually a hand painted backdrop from Kate Backdrop. However, you don't really need this for the portrait that you're gonna take. You could use a white wall. You could actually shoot outdoor and just have everything else in darkness. You could shoot at night in your driveway. It's really up to you on what background you want. But in this particular case, I decided to use this also to be able to hide the junk that's there in the back. Now, the light that I'm gonna be using is this one. This is my Sony F2, uh, sorry, this is my Sony F60RM. However, again, you do not need to use this light. Any light that you have at your disposal will be more than enough for this particular shoot so long as you have the capability to shoot off camera. What do I mean by off camera? You need to be able to control your flash remotely via a trigger, whether it be a TTL trigger or a trigger that you can control your flash power or if your flash is just a manual flash, that will do also so long as it fires off camera and it syncs with your camera. Okay, now this light is mounted on my light stand using this one, the Magmod MagShoe. However, again, you don't really need this. It's a nice to have because it's a very sturdy flash mount and at the same time, it's very easy to tilt. But there are a lot of flash brackets out there or flash mounts that are available in the market for a lot less. However, I do like this one, but we're talking about budget here. But again, the budget that I was really referring to is really the budget lighting setup. Now, how will I get a budget lighting setup? We won't even use conventional modifiers like soft boxes or beauty dishes. We will just use this foam board that you can pick up in any art supply shop. This foam board is what, $5 or $10 maybe? This is 30 by 40 inches. You just need to be able to find a way to mount it on your light stand. You could either duct tape it or you could use gaffer tape or you could even have your friend just holding this and I will show you how to properly use it to get very good portraits. But for me, I will be just be using a Manfrotto Justin clamp because, well, because I have it in the studio. But again, as I said, it's budget. If you don't have that, just find somebody to hold on to this for you or just get another light stand and maybe just tape this to your light stand so it won't move, okay? So I will mount it this way. And then from there, let's get onto my camera. So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM lens. Again, you don't necessarily have to use this camera or this lens. It really depends on your composition. Well, the camera is what you have. So you're gonna be able to get these images with whatever camera that you're using. However, of course, if you're using cameras like this, the images might turn out a little bit better, but the principle of the light will still remain the same. Now the 50 millimeter 1.2 lens is a choice because I am shooting a half body portrait. This one is non-negotiable, not necessarily the lens, but the focal length. The most important thing to remember is if you're gonna shoot a tight portrait, focal length should be about 85 to 135, Half body shot could be a 50 millimeter to about 70 millimeter, depending on the, on the space that you have. In this particular case, I think 50 is perfect. And if you're gonna do a full body shot, maybe you might want to shoot with 35 millimeter. Now, 
that is the actual focal length, not the focal length of, let's say, you're going to say 35 millimeter on a crop is 50. No, I actually mean an actual 50 millimeter lens because that's what you want to do to the what you want to use in order for you to prevent any distortion. So if you're using a crop body and you have a 35 millimeter lens, I would suggest you still shoot it as if you were just shooting with a 35 and not a 50 millimeter focal length. So you got to move back in order for you to be able to get a nice full body portrait. Okay. Now, everything that you're seeing now is recorded remotely or recorded using this one, my Atomos Ninja V. So everything that you will be seeing, every image is actually straight out of the camera. Absolutely no editing will be done. Now, if you want to see the final images, stick around until the end of the video because that's where I would normally post it. Now, I also have my camera mounted, of course, here on my Peak Design Carbon Fiber tripod. However, when you're shooting in the studio, you don't necessarily have to use a tripod. But for me, in, in terms of this video, it's very important so that my video stays steady so that you guys don't get dizzy while I am actually shooting. So let's go into the settings of my camera. Basically, my settings are 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100. The reason why I did that is so that I can actually remove all existing ambient light like this. So what you can see now, it's pitch black. That is basically what my camera is seeing. The reason why it seems very bright now is because when I turn on my flash, it actually disables live view here in the camera. If you don't have a TTL trigger, you can easily do that in any Sony lens. You can just disable live view. All right, so with all those settings out of the way, let's set up the light now. What's going to happen is this light, this foam board, is actually going to represent a relatively big softbox. It's a 30 by 40 cm softbox, so that's big. Basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to position it like any other softbox, maybe slightly higher, put it up here, and have the flash directed towards that softbox. So what we're doing is we're going to bounce light off this and that's the one that's actually going to give really nice soft light to your subject. Now, the nice thing about this thing actually is it has one capability that normal soft boxes don't. I can actually put the light closer and have it smaller and have a more intense light and then the, the light here will just spread all over. Or I can have it this far and have it use the entire uh, surface to be able to get a nice even distribution of light. This particular lighting setup allows you to experiment a lot. And that's one thing that's really beautiful with, you know, DIY softboxes like this. Okay, so let's set this one up. And let's see. What is my flash setting? Let's see. Let me check. It is now at full power. I think it's a little bit too close, so maybe I'll just bring it back. Okay. And now that everything's set up, it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. Babe, come on in. All right, perfect. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Of course, you look beautiful. And thank you very much to our friend, Mela Jimenez, for virtually assisting Coco put on her makeup for today. So as I told you, since I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter, I actually want to shoot half body or maybe until here. And let's take one test shot now, babe, okay? All right. There we go. Full power is a bit too strong, so well, let's adjust it. Let's make my flash weaker. Maybe about one fourth power. Let's see how this one looks like. Hmm, very nice. I think one fourth power is very good. It's actually good for me. I like it. So many things that you can do with this light. Let's try one more. How about we put it right behind her and then we put this light in front of her. And let's see how that one will turn out. Again, sorry guys, if I'm just playing around with this one, seeing how everything will look like. And even if the flash is there, can you move here, babe, please? The flash is there, so now it's gonna be easy for me to remove it. Oops, sorry, I don't know why it's misfiring. I think my battery's almost about to die. Ooh, interesting. Nice flare to it, but let me just Make it a bit weaker and bring this one closer. Oh, it's in the shot.
Interesting. I can actually, I'll make this light higher so that it doesn't give that much flare. And it's still gonna give a nice hair light to you. Can you move here so that it's easy to remove that? Okay, very nice. Actually, can you move here? There, see? It's giving a nice hair light. And at the same time, move forward and then move here closer. It's giving a nice hair light to your subject. And at the same time, it's giving beautiful light back. And there you go. That's how simple it was with a very cheap, almost next to nothing flash modifier. You're able to really experiment and see how you can create beautiful portrait light. You saw me actually just playing around, checking things out or trying out new lighting setups. And as you can see, this wasn't really planned, right? It was basically, okay, let's do one lighting setup that's really just using this cheap modifier and see what we can come up with. And we came out with some decent images, babe. And they were actually decent, I was happy with them. So again, if you, did, if you like this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.